Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, on to another video. I'm going to stay consistent. I got a lot of goals, and one of these days, I'm going to break down these goals for you guys to show you uh, how ambitious and how uh, and how grateful I am that you guys just watch the videos, man. That's all you guys got to do. Watch the video, skip the ads. They get the money, regardless if you watch them or not. And that helps me out in the long run to establish my future endeavors. So with that being said, let's get into this funny video, bro. I thought I'd elaborate on it to give my interpretation of it. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. So on and so forth. Thank you guys for your support and watching the video. Appreciate it. Now this story's old. I didn't know about it until just recently. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell it to the audience, just based on. I was at work before they let me off, but there was a Sureño that moved from, he's in, he lives in Tulare, but he moved from L.A. And he worked with me, we exchanged words, he told me what he was, I told him what I was, I told him, hey, bro, you know, we just at work, my boy, you know, we could just be cool, that's all. And he was cool with that. He was respectful, he was a little chunky boy. Hella cool people, bro. Me and that I used to always ask him about down south and down there, and that's when he brought up this particular story. Now, mind you, the story goes as followed, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen it, but for the ones that haven't, allow me to make you laugh for a little while. The only thing I ever knew about Pico Rivera was, you know, that my celly or my neighbor at the time, he was a Mongo story that I told back a long time ago. That individual, he was from there. Now, I should probably just do a little digging about... You know, Pico Rivera and the hoods out there. But there was an individual who went by the name of John. I'm not sure if that's really his real name in 2004. But he was from, I think it was Pico Nuevo. Was kicking it at a liquor store down south in his neighborhood. He's a rival of Pico Rivera Trece. So you got two other individuals, gang members, driving around. Whether they're looking for trouble or not, who knows. But one of them was named Choppers. Y'all don't know the chopper story? And he was with his homeboy, Robert, and they were just sliding through the city, doing whatever they were going to do. Decided to pull over at the liquor store. Obviously, John's from a rival gang. So they start banging on each other all crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa. You remember those days? Like, what's up, fool? Where you from? I'm from whoop, 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 whoop. Where you from? Whoop, 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 whoop. And, then that's, and it goes up or it goes down. Who knows? Well, choppers were strapped up. Decided to let off, bust, hit the individual a few times. Unalive them right there on the spot at the liquor store. Mind you, they flee the scene. And this dude gets away with it for multiple years. It went unresolved for a couple of years. Oh, but it gets way better though. Stay tuned. So now maybe in 2008, 2009, he gets pulled over and gets arrested for driving without a driving with a suspended license. Without having a license, a valid license. It's always the one thing that you didn't think you would get busted for, and you get busted for it, and here comes a wave of charges that have been waiting for you. For I'm telling you, karma's a mother. It, that, that, that lady will come to you when the, you least expect it. That's how I got caught. I was about to hit a bank. All of a sudden, I just tell the homie, hey, man, can you go drop this girl off? And he runs a red light, brings him back, and boom, 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 boom. And I get arrested. It's always that one fatal mistake, that minor mistake that people make, and they get busted. So, bam, he gets booked in for driving with a suspended license of all things. You could have just tell your girl to drive. You couldn't just sit in the passenger seat. He didn't want to be a princess passenger, I guess. You know, that's what I would have done. If I got a suspended license, I ain't risking nothing, especially when I got that trailing behind me. Hell no. Nah. So, bam, they book him. And they take photographs of his tattoos. Oh, my God, bro. Like, you got to be the most America's dumbest criminals and Southern California criminals I've ever heard of. Like, how could you be so retorted for this? He decides to get a tattoo across his chest, which is not even all that, bro, to be honest with you. I mean, if you're going to gonna get this kind of crime scene tatted on, you might as well just, I would have put some detail into it, at least professionally. So he has a liquor store tatted on him. The very exact liquor store in which he did, you know, his jale, his desmadre. And he also has... A little cholio, all pintero out with a big old brocha, choking the peanut man. Then you go to the middle of his chest, and he actually got an awesome G.I. Joe helicopter shooting bullets at the peanut man. 
And you see a little peanut man on the ground right there getting shot up. Little bullet holes right there. Same liquor store tatted on him. That's what he gets on his chest. Everything of that tattoo resembles everything that took place the day of this unalivement, this homicide. The thing about it, the cops don't suspect nothing. Obviously, they're taking pictures of a, of a, a gang member to register him as a gang member for gang task force and possible, you know, random raids and, and searches and pulling over. So one day, some detectives decide to go through a lot of these gang files. And you start browsing through, like they're looking through the Vatican archives for, you know, Jesus scriptures that were forbidden from the Bible. Like, like Adam's version of the apocalypse kind of thing. And they see this little kid, Choppers, named Chopper, with a tattoo on his chest. And they say, you know what? Hmm, let's, let's take a closer look. Started getting Sherlock's Holmes with a microflying glass. Everything on his chest was exactly the same on how it took place at the time of this murder. Where he was shot, where he was laid out in front of the liquor store, every exact detail. But, you know, the tattoo was a cartoon version of it. But that's all the evidence that they needed to convict this kid. And obviously when the, when the, when the trial was up and he got convicted, he actually smirked to the family. The ones, they were all there crying and they seen that he was not, he was not, there was no remorse in what he did to their loved ones. There was no remorse or no regret, no shame, but he was proud. He stood up proudly in that courtroom. The fact that he had the whole crime scene tatted on his chest and he got convicted for it. So I'm sure he probably paid since it was ugly and it was all quacks. You know, it was ridiculous art. Probably pay $65 to get that tattoo done. But the judge went on ahead and gave him 65 years. So that ain't bad at all. If you really think about it, 65 years for a tattoo ain't, ain't that bad. If you think about it, just think about it. It's not a lot. He didn't get life. So he still has the possibility to parole. And by the time he paroles, I don't think that tattoo, ain't, ain't, it ain't going to be nothing that but look like a, a slab of mud, smeared ink. Like if you just grab your hand and an ashtray and just smeared it across the wall, that's probably what his tattoo is going to look like because they're so beat up as it is. And he's going to be old and wrinkled and everything's just going to droop and shrivel up. And I'm not talking about his man parts. But that's what happened, bro. This individual literally tatted the whole crime scene. He pretty much tatted a statement to the cop saying, hey, I'm the one who did it. Come look for me. This is me right here. But what really got him convicted was that cops actually went undercover as gang members when they realized that he had this tattoo on him. And just went over there and just infiltrated wherever he was at, whatever he was doing and whoever he was kicking it with and began questioning his tattoos. And he admitted to him blatantly. Proudly, yeah, man, this is the vato I caught slipping at the liquor store, and I, I blasted him over a St. Ice bottle. I was off of King Cobra. Really, bro? So, first of all, I mean, I understand, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a foul situation, and it's a messed up case, and it's very unfortunate the kid lost their life at the hands of another gang member, but that does take place in the streets of Los Angeles. We all know that. But since when do you just meet somebody you've never known? First of all, how does a cop? infiltrate the gangs. You know how hard you got to pull. I mean, it ain't blood in and blood out where, you know what I mean? Paco Aguilar, you know, became a cop, but he was from the hood, so he knew how to portray both images. We're talking about a cop that goes to the police academy and ain't never once in his life been on the street gang. How do you just go up to somebody's body and say, what's up, fool? Hey, by the way, what's up with your tag, homie? What's up with that tattoo, homie? You good? That shit's tight, homie. What's it say? What's it mean, fool? And this kid is like, not knowingly, just says, you know what, just talks about it and admits to the murder. And bam, that undercover uh, investigation, that little little sting operation that they created is what really got him arrested in the first place. He wasn't he didn't get arrested for the the suspended license. He didn't do time for that. So he might have he I guess he made it to the streets and that's when they decided to do an undercover investigation on his kid and caught him red handed. And the kid pretty much threw his whole life away for a tattoo. For arrogance. Admitting to a murder and being proud of it. And getting a symbol of it at that. So that's what I mean when I, when I say America's dumbest criminals. And honestly, I try to figure out a positive message to the kids. But overall, bro, just don't get the damn tattoo. If you're going to do a crime, don't get a tattoo. 
Plain and simple. If you're going to go shoplifting at a store and you steal a Gucci belt, don't wear it and post it on social media. That You got to be the dumbest person I've ever met. And it's funny because I'm going to tell you a story. Since the homie, since that guy was an America's dumbest criminal, I knew a homie on the streets. He was actually catching a Sureno slipping in the city of Tulare. He tried to catch him over there kind of towards off Pratt. It's all, it was off Pratt Street on the west side going towards Barsley. Honestly, my boy thought he was a gunslinger. This is how funny this is, man. He, re, he, he caught him slipping. He seen that they were posted up at a certain spot on the outside, but they were like inside of the fence, but they were outside. So what does he do? He goes run back and he gets a 38. But you know 38, you're not going to leave the shell cases. They're going to be intact. But you know you got, the, you got the hammer in the back. So what does he do? He thinks he's, he, he goes out there and he tries to act like he's Billy the Kid, like he's John freaking rain and instead of just you know what i mean letting off six and then running he decides to pull up so he can have a better war story to tell and do this with his hands and he lets off five rounds thinking that he let off six forgot that he had one left so not only by him doing it it was slicing his his palm and the inside and he had a big old gash wound right here he starts running, holding it with his finger on the trigger. And you know how when you run, you're going like that? Whoop, boom. Blew his kneecap off. So now he got his blood trail on the cement, running as fast as he can. So it was a, he was a white homie from the west side. He had west side lokes on his, on, his, on, the, on his lower back. But I don't think he even lives there anymore. I don't even think he's from the hood anymore. I think he kind of grew out of it. But man, but he was a trailer park white boy, though. I ain't going to lie. I mean, but he didn't even live in a trade. He lived in a house. But, like, I swear, one time I went over there and I seen, like, two dirty diapers sitting on his TV. Just sitting there. And, they, they'll, honestly, when you walked in, you can smell the aroma of the diaper sitting on that TV. And I remember staring at him like, man, dude. Like, this is an episode of Hoarders. Like, literally. Like, I swear to God, if I actually go in the kitchen, I'm going to find a rat in a noodle pot. In a noodle pot probably cooking some noodles but the rats gonna be chilling and they're just swimming on top of the noodles and they forgot to eat the noodles that's how dirty this spot was bro i did not want to sit down i didn't want to do nothing and it's crazy is that there everybody was in the house tweaked out like bro you're off tweet tweet clean your house that'd be the best thing you do clean the freaking house he had his daughter right there i mean i swear his daughter looked like she was doing cartwheels and front flips without using her hands and dirt like she was just she said he had a little white daughter, but she was just full of dirt. And I was like, yeah, she was out there eating dirt, bro. And they didn't even care. Well, the homie runs to his path, crying, hysterical, making a mess. But, you know, how you going to make a mess in a mess anyway? So that, I, don't, I don't even think it mattered. If anything, it gave the house a little bit of color by him dripping all over the place. So we get the call. We hear about them because we had heard we had heard it. Where I was staying at was like maybe two blocks down. We had we had heard the, the ruckus. So me and the homies just get up all tweaked out. And it's, I think it was during the summertime, too, because I remember I was sweating nasty. But I had a little black nylon to stop my sweat. I had a red hat. I was still wearing a red penalty, and I had black dickies on. And it was summertime. I should I should have been half naked. But for some reason, I wanted to be G'd up at an, in 122-degree weather, just baking. But I remember going over there with the homies. And they were like, what's up, fool? Did they blast the homie? They blasted the homie? And he's just right there like, no. Nah. No, nah, hey, give me something to drink, bro. Come on, man. This is how it hurts. You know what the homie... The, I, of all things, bro, the homie don't have no beer. You think me, you would offer the homie a beer? No, nah, you know what he offered him? A 7-Up, a can, a cold one. So the homie's like... <laughs> and then we're like, man, what are we going to do, bro? And the homie's automatically... He's, he had been up for days... I think he was wearing that same top tank top that he had on last week because I seen that I remember that little rip in the hole right here. I was like, bro, this fool don't change at all, bro. You're tweaked out, bro. At least iron your clothes, change them, wash them, whatever, man. Don't do drugs, kids. So we're all debating, like, well, what are we gonna do? The only one that had the car at the time was uh Mondo Gomez, the homie Sporty from Westside NGs, and it was a beat up bucket. I mean, when he bought it, it had like spider webs all on the front shield. And when he bought it, he didn't even wash it. He was just driving around with it with steel, the spider webs and the and those uh the things that clean your window. I forgot what they are. The 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 windshield wipers. 
He had spider webs all through that thing, man. Like they, they had dirt from last year still just sitting on it. He didn't clean it. He was just thought it was a cool, cool ride to mob around in. He had he can has a he had a reason to say he had a whip. So we're all just tweaked out looking at the homie just kneecap just look like like you split a handball in half with just one half of it just right there just and we're just like Ugh. but we're so memorized mesmerized about what's what's wrong with his kneecap he's like who's gonna take who's gonna call the cops I need an ambulance bro I'm bleeding bad bro I'm bleeding blood and I told Sporty I was like hey bro you just go drop him off and he's like forget that I ain't dropping this fool off hell no I ain't finna get caught up in nothing you just see what he just did what he just said he did I'm cool bro. I'm cool. I was like, somebody got to drop him off, bro. So what does that tweak that homie from Westside Lugs do? Calls his dad. Dad pulls up in a in a beat up S10 truck. Remember those old school S10 ones? But I'm talking about the older ones, like the early 90s, mid 90s ones. Pulls up in one of those. Tells him, hey, get in the back. Got in the back. Drove him to to Larry Hospital and dumped him right there. That was the that was the best we could do, bro. That was honestly the best we could do. I didn't go. None of us went, not even the homie from Westside Lokes went, but he had his dad drop him off because his dad wasn't affiliated and dropped him off. Dad never came back, said he went to go clean the car out. Come to find out later, the homie got busted for it. Same bullets in his knee were the same ones on that house on Pratt Street, and he got arrested. He wound up taking a deal for 12 years for attempt. So, like I said, America's dumbest criminals. He thought he wanted to be, he wanted, he really wanted to be out there and be John Wayne, bro. Like, really, see, seriously, he thought he was Billy the Kid and was doing this, didn't count his bullets, but now I don't think he could walk the same. But overall, I thought I'd make you guys laugh with these two stories, man. Chopper, I, I never ran into him in prison. I didn't even hear about this in prison. Because trust me, I would have had a field day on this dude if I ever met this dude in prison. Like, really, bro? Like, how much dope were you smoking when you thought it was okay to get that tatted on you? Like, what was in that dope, bro? What was it cut with? Rat poison? You feel me? But things happen. I want to sit here and tell the kids, hey, bro, don't do crimes. But if you do, do it smart because that's still hypocritical. But all I can say is, is that some people are pretty ridiculous when it comes to doing crimes and getting charged. So my question to you guys is, if you guys want to engage, leave it in the comment section. What's the stupidest thing you ever heard somebody get busted for? Let me know in the comment section. Let's all read them. Let's all have fun. Let's all get a laugh out of it. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.